Hey everyone, Jen and Adam here with Pepper Hero. And a few of you asked if we could put together a video about our bouquet combinations that we use throughout the season, throughout the year. So that's what we're gonna do today. So what are our favorite bouquet combinations? Well, we kind of break it down by season. So the first season we're gonna start with is spring. And shockingly, I think we actually have a bunch of combinations to share with you in spring, but just so you all know, spring is the most difficult time, time of year to be able to match yes. and make recipes for bouquets. So even though we have some certain rules for bouquet making, sometimes we break our rules just to be able to have enough to get bouquets out to market. Mm -hmm. So know that if you're in that position, you're not alone. Everyone's just trying to hold it together to get into the really good uh, summer flowers that start blooming. Uh, I don't know, June time frame, right? Mm -hmm. All right, so we're gonna walk you through some of those color combinations, or some of those flower combinations. So mm -hmm. the first thing we'll start with um, is by using tulips, daffodils, and flowering branches just as bouquets themselves. Usually greenery is extremely scarce and we don't have anything to throw in as greenery. Sometimes we use the, the tulip, some of the tulip greenery just mm -hmm. to throw in and be able to use this greenery. And sometimes we even get creative and take iris greenery. Yeah, take the iris. What are they, oh, fronds or shoots? The, you know, the, the iris thingies. You guys know what we're talking about. <laughs> Sometimes we'll throw that in just for a little extra greenery in our bouquet. So that's how we start. We then usually transition into having more of the um, ranunculus, anemone. Uh, yeah. What are some really nice combinations? I mean, honestly, you cannot go wrong with, with ranunculus and anemone no matter what you do. Yeah, so I, during that time, we have ranunculus and anemone blooming. Um, our salvia starts to bloom. Um, Sal salvia and ladies mantle all at the same yeah, time. The ladies mantle and salvia, that whole like color combo, the chartreuse of the ladies mantle is really awesome. And we usually have that beautiful textural uh, wild crest that grows here on the farm that mm -hmm. looks absolutely stunning in bouquets. And this is the time of year where our mint really starts to go crazy. So we have added a lot of mint on our farm. We want it to invade we take that as a challenge. We cut the heck out of it. So we haven't had our mint invade yet because we are cutting it as fast as it can grow. But mint is one of our favorite greeneries that we use, especially in the spring. Uh, and one of my favorite bouquet combinations is to use, uh, I think there was one, peonies, campanula, sweet william, stock, uh, we use a lot of greenery, uh, peony greenery. We actually take the leaves off the peonies and use those as greenery to fill our bouquets. Uh, and then iris was the last one in that particular combination. So stunning, incredibly popular with our customers. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite uh, bouquet combinations. And later in May, we start to get the viburnum starts blooming. We're able to use that viburnum greenery. The allium is coming up. So we know, you know, things come in stages throughout the season or we work to plant things throughout the year. And so we're able to use a lot of allium this time of year. What yeah, is? oh, and allium, and you were talking about using the, vi the, the viburnum. It's snowball viburnum that we use and we find it to be multi-use. We actually use the snowball viburnum uh, flowers in early spring and then we have it later in the season to be able to use the greenery and bouquets just as a filler greenery. Yeah so kind of back to our daffodils the viburnum flowers are just starting to bloom out they're still a tight green bud we chop and use those they work great in bouquets. And they look so beautiful yeah. that color is amazing. Mm -hmm. Later in May if the weather stays cool we're able to get ranunculus for consecutive weeks and uh, ranunculus combination that we like to use are ranux with bachelor's buttons. We are still continuing to have some succession of ladies mantle growing, so we're able to use that for a few weeks. And a little secret nugget, you can use chives, chive blossoms yep. in bouquets, and chives are blooming their little heads off, just like the rest of the allium. They're related to the onion family. So all of those things are blooming in very early spring, mm -hmm. which is really nice. Yeah. Other things that you're gonna have in later spring are roses. You're gonna have snapdragons, godetia, 
We didn't make mention to it, but lilac is another one that we love to use, and we'll show you some pictures of some bouquet combinations that we did. Mm -hmm. So I mean, amazing. Dame's Rocket, too, is another. So we hope we gave you some really good ideas of some different bouquet combinations you can do for spring. Hopefully you're inspired to try to make some of your own. Uh, let's go ahead and transition then to talking about summer bouquet combinations. For me, one of my favorite summer blooms are sunflowers. Now I try and get our sunflowers planted early. If I get them planted early enough, they'll start blooming in mid-June. So, you know, more or less, most sunflower varieties are about 60 days. Um, so I try to get my sunflowers planted in mid-April. We're hoping, you know, we hope that there's no snow and we've been pretty successful the past few years. Sunflowers look amazing with purple, which you'll see us pair it kind of with some purple lisianthus. Another amazing combination, I think you actually came up with this. Adam took sunflowers, paired it with a me, and then we also put in some salvia. Oh, it looked so beautiful and romantic. Like, who knew sunflowers? I mean, they're just such a bold statement that light airy combination yeah. just look beautiful and sunflowers with white agrostema there's something about sunflowers with a combination of white that actually give them an elegant look and yeah um, they're really pretty since i'm mentioning white agrostema i have to mention our purple agrostema which yes. i love purple agrostema it's probably just because it's so bright crazy crazy bright it's one of my, my favorite fillers and it goes fantastic with sunflowers. Another good combination to use, um, especially as we're in the height of summer, zinnias. So looking at doing zinnias, sunflower, lisianthus, ami, mountain mint, uh, agrostemma solosha, all those things together, uh, pairing them together, it just looks incredible. Yep. So other ideas uh, for greenery for summer bouquets, we have uh, that viburnum greenery we were talking about, cosmos, we usually use the greenery of cosmos to put into our bouquets, uh, raspberry foliage, especially if you have a thornless variety that you can use, it's perfect in bouquets and lasts a super long time. And then a couple other ideas, mint, Adam said mint, uh, and then basil is kind of our other staple greenery that we use for summer bouquets. Okay, so with some other filler ideas to kind of switch up your recipe a little bit, straw flower, status, uh, what's some other ones that they should uh, be looking gumfrina. at? Gumfrina. Yeah, um, Solosha. I, yeah, I don't know that we mentioned Solosha yet. It's one of our absolute heavy hitters. Uh, with the zinnias. Zinnias and celosia are our huge mainstays throughout mm -hmm. the summer season. Yeah, salvia, cosmos, tansy. Actually, people are like, what is that little yellow ball flower? <laughs> it's tansy. If you ever grow tansy, just know if the older it gets, the stinkier it is. So try to catch it early before it gets stinky, right? Uh, Jen says it smells like feet, but I say it smells like the feet of an angel. Oh, it's so horrible. <laughs> it's so beautiful though. But yes, we had a grocery store ask us not to bring tansy in our bouquets anymore. <laughs> That's okay. Good learning lesson. But people don't talk about things like that. So we're being totally transparent with you guys. Hope you can value that and respect uh, the good advice. Yeah. One particular recipe that we like specifically in summer is to make a rainbow bouquet. And especially with everything that we had going on this year, the rainbow bouquet, vi bright, vibrant rainbow colors it was in and I don't expect this trend to die into next year in fact we're starting to plan now how we can do more very rainbow colored bright floral combinations so things you should be thinking about we did a really beautiful orange celosia called Sunday series mm -hmm. so we paired this this bright orange plumed celosia with bright colored zinnias I think we included like a purple one a yellow one an orange one all in that same bouquet and holy cow it just like it popped oh and and then the hot pink solutions mm -hmm. too it looked so incredible and it just made so many people happy so more rainbow bouquets for 2021 we're going to focus on that for, for this next year our last section is talking about fall bouquet combinations fall we put together some of these warm toned uh, color combinations so zine think zinnias sunflowers millet celosia 
straw flower. And probably number one for fall for us are our dahlias. Our zinnias, we tend to grow more red and orange for the fall season just to try and match the season. It works really well for us. Some other things that you should consider for some of these late fall bouquets, there are marigolds that we incorporate in, which is one of our biggest things that we use in our fall bouquets. Mm -hmm. I think probably one of my favorite that starts to bloom is goldenrod. We do grow amaranth, which is another great fall bloomer and sweet annie as well. Uh, we love incorporating sweet annie into our fall bouquets specifically because it has a beautiful little yellow ball bloom on it and it smells incredible. Mm -hmm. It's one we also harvest out and use it for drieds later in the season, but sweet annie is another one you kind of struggle with a little bit, but we love using it in fall bouquets. And fall is when we start to cut a lot of things to dry throughout the winter. So we still have celosia going which we should definitely mention that we start to cut like crazy to dry. Oh, yeah. um, our millet, we love millet, especially the, the dark purple majesty millet is absolutely stunning and beautiful in fall bouquets. And something that we really kind of neglected to mention for late summer is lisianthus. It starts to bloom in late summer for us and we use that into the fall season because you'll cut it out and you'll typically get another flush if you treat it right. Mm -hmm. um, so that, that is one of our big mainstays for the fall season, our beautiful, beautiful Lysianthus. Yep. We have several different styles of bouquets that we make on the farm. So we have our CSA customers, we have grocery store, farmer's market, our wrap jars. So we have a lot of different things that we make here. Are there any color combinations that you all like that we missed? If so, please comment below. We'd love to know which color combinations you all like. If you guys enjoyed this video, please hit that subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up while you're at it. We'll see you next time.